a versatile scholar and artist translator critic and creative writer in the field of science fiction closely associated with kalpa vishwa is a good friend of deep ghoshar and an outstanding personality at least the growth and development of science fiction is concerned he was also a renowned resource person last time we enjoyed a studious lecture by sumit vardhan sir at the online podium of international symposium exclusively devoted to thought experimentation in humanities science and science fiction and sumit vardhan sir thank you very much for resuming the online platform on behalf of the entire organizing committee we humbly welcome you sir now the request ball is in your court we will not take much time please uh, uh thank you dr navle i'm audible yes sir yes yes okay so thank you uh, dr navle then that and rest of the members of devgiri college uh thank you to dr uh, ashok principal of the college for organizing such a beautiful seminar i also thank uh, iasfs and his office bearers dr shrinar hari dr mishra and thank you for allowing me to speak on this uh, presentation uh i will just uh, my topic for today is uh, i i just hurriedly uh, you know sort of uh, came in here so pardon me there is something wrong with what i <coughs> talk about sir one I'm more request uh, one more request is please take your time see i want to clear one fact that the great person committed person devoted their life and we should not bother about you should proceed according to your plan please okay thank you thank you so much for uh, dr navale for this kind words um, uh what you know my topic today is uh, just a short presentation of my upcoming book because i thought that will probably give me an anchor of you know what are the kinds of uh, work i am doing uh, so let me first uh, start by sharing my screen um uh, You you can share your screen, sir. Please. Ah, uh, one second. That is on time. Yes. 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 Okay. 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 <clears throat> I I mean officially the you know the topic for discussion to today is uh, <clears throat> my upcoming novel, which I think is 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 finished and it is now getting prepared to be published by Kalpa Biswa maybe. uh in a month or a half i think the work of book building is going on <coughs> and uh, this is an opportunity for me to tell you a bit about it and the background and when it started and the you know because it this represents a bit of a experimentation that i mean doing it science fiction uh i think uh, dr navale has already introduced me but still uh, for those who have not with those who have not met online before is a quick background about me i uh, started writing for uh, science fiction when i was at a very young age so my uh, the place for experimentation was uh, a magazine called uh, uh, fantastic and uh, you may have heard about it it's a, it takes a special mention in the history of uh, uh, bengali science fiction it was exclusively devoted by uh, two science science fiction and founded by uh, adrish bardhan so, you know and in in the in a matter of relationships he happens to be a monk my uncle and so i got a bit of men mentoring from him when i was uh, at a young age uh, and i have you know i i had in between i had stopped writing and then i came back to writing of you know in the recent years you know published a number of stories and novels uh, in magazines and webzines published two uh, books in science fiction nakshatra pratik uh, the, actually the nakshatra is a bengali transliteration for the word nakshatra so if i speak in hindi it should be actually nakshatra pratik and artha trishna uh, artha trishna was the first bengali steampunk uh, and uh, i have uh, also uh, written a, a few uh, uh, reviews on scroll i first reviewed dr suparna banerjee's very eminent book uh, on indian science fiction i think it's a very good book which uh, any enthusiastic and enthusiast who is interested in indian sf should take a look at uh, a very scholarly book and last week i think i last week yeah, or early this week i those one article i got published on stole.in on 
uh, I wrote a review on the Nebula and Hugo Award winners of 2020, which was uh, Martha Wells's uh, Motherboard Series book uh, and uh, the book which wrote uh, got the Nebula Award. Uh, I will leave your sort of in the chat. Let me leave a link to that full article. I will not share my screen because. Uh, it's a school. Here's a link to the school article. It's a, can I request someone talking to please mute the mic? Unmute yourself and continue, sir, please. Sumit Bardhan, sir, is being requested to unmute and continue. I muted all the participants. Bardhanji, please unmute. I have unmuted. I had to again start sharing because. Please, please. Take your time. Okay, so my uh, Artha Krishna was uh, the, the first Bengali steam pun. I have, uh, I just shared a link, I, which was uh, my review on the um, Hugo and Nebula Award winners in scroll just published earlier this week. So these are the things that I do. Uh, uh, and one, uh, as a writer, uh, I one of the things that keeps me uh, sort of on track is whenever somebody tells something is not possible or has not been done. In fact, one of the reasons for writing Arthadishna was uh, in the group on a, on a social media, I was seeing some posts saying that, uh, A, uh, that you cannot write uh, this kind of science fiction in, in Bengali because there are not enough uh, history, there's not enough uh, words vocabulary is weak and even if you write people are not going to read this because they have a different taste so on and so forth so as a sort of a challenge i wrote and tried to see whether it was possible to actually write steampunk in bengali and i and i think it did get a good reception um i have a uh, you know apart from writing of course uh, i am i am a you know i'm a professional in in information technology and i my uh, area of uh, work is machine learning uh, so it gives me a bit of an idea of, uh, you know, when these things technologies are concerned. Uh, I am also a classical musician of the uh, Itwa Gharana. I play the Mohandi. Uh, so let me go back now. Let me go to my... Um, so let me now talk about my book. Uh, the book, uh, the story takes in a imaginary world and a planet called Ambalika. Now, uh, Ambalika is a very dystopian world where the human civilization is actually in regress. It is, uh, it is, uh, is going back. And uh, the reason for writing this kind of books was use, using a Japanese style of storytelling called the Jidai Geki. Now, uh, Jidai Geki is a sort of a period drama. A lot of... Uh, Filmmakers and writers of and novelists have yes, yeah, used the Jidai Geki style, and I'll probably you'll get to you know you know I'll probably get to talk a bit about more as I progress. So this was a broad idea of uh, why I first created this world and then started writing the story. Now the the current uh, uh, novel that I'm going to talk about was not, not the first story created in this background of this new uh, new world. The first story to create uh, either a wrote on the background of this world was a story called Mangal Devri. The Devri is a Bengali word which stands for a gateway or a portal. It's normally a structure that you will find in the beginning of the roads or the, or the, or the start of a palace, which it's, it's sort of a leads you to a city, a city gate. This was published in the Kalpa Biso webzine. And it was actually a retelling of uh, a very famous movie by Akira Kurosawa. Called Rashomon. Um, now Akira Kurosawa, this it's a it's a pretty old movie. It was, pop, it was filmed in 1950. It's almost uh, you know two thirds of a century old. And I wanted to tell this uh, story, uh, retell the story in a science fiction setup. Uh, the uh, Rashomon Kurosawa Rashomon is based by, by Kurosawa on actually two short stories, uh, Rashomon and Yabu no Naka, written by the Japanese author. Ryunusuke Akutagawa. Okay, and when I wrote this, I took the material both from the movie Rashomon as well as the original stories by Akutagawa. 
now and this is actually which uh, it, it just started as a venture to see whether i can retell uh, kurosawa's uh, film because it's a very it's a it's a movie which i uh, hold very dear because uh, this movie talks about if you if you've seen this movie it's i think it will be freely available on the uh, on the youtube i think it is there it is it's a story is about a samurai who gets killed uh, by a bandit and his his wife is violated and then when a trial is held and and the witness is called and each witness gives a absolutely different story altogether now the the endly its story ends uh, you know with a sort of catch notes that sometimes the truth is not discernible if, you know if you if even if four people or five people have seen an incident each will give us a version uh, which has the print of the that person's own bias i i wrote that story because i saw you know the you know that this attempt sometimes of creating narratives out of events and then people fighting over what actually happened it sometimes is you know difficult for me to see that uh, the, you know uh, that the stories can be given twisted and given in shapes so i thought the rashomon was a good story to be told that sometimes the truth is not discernible and the my truth the right truth is not a kind of approach you should take so i i took this uh, setting and then uh, story and set it in a very imaginary world called uh, ambalika where the civilization had actually regressed uh, and when i did this story and i, re- I because to write the story i had to read akotagawa and which uh, uh, sort of pulled me into the world of japanese literature now here is a <clears throat> short write up of ryunisu akotagawa he 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 was uh, he just lived for 35 years and he died by uh, consuming barbitol he did not he ended his own life but uh, he was he is one of the famous uh, 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 literature figures in literary figures in japan he is called uh, the father of japanese short story in fact one of the short story prizes called akuta gawa prize is given under his name he was born which uh, in a period which was which is named the taisho period yeah? it is a period when the emperor who ruled japan was very weak and since it was weak there was a lot of uh, political struggle from the old order to the new order and which which led to a lot of political turmoil so when akuta was writing these stories it could not have been very uh, uh, safe for him to have written openly so what he did was he uh, researched the history of japan where uh, there are a lot of turmoil in society there are a lot of fighting then things were the peace was not there and he used those historical settings either to write his own stories and uh, or he took some classical stories uh, in th- these these eras like the heian era the edo era the early meiji period where there was a lot of political turmoil there was a lot of uh, unrest in society and he told his story so when i once i saw this Uh, it gave me an idea that sometimes probably the historical stories could be retold and reset in a different setting and you know you could uh, tell your own story and sort of leave a note of caution now uh, before i you know um, so the question is why why did i choose the historical literature let me share two uh, uh, definition of science fiction i think there are definition of science fiction is a very dangerous area it's like a mind field so you say something and you know people are literally get up in arms but let me share two two uh, uh, definitions uh, one is by kim stanley robinson which you you know more he has uh, author of very famous books like uh, the mars trilogy and uh, the 2012 uh, he's written lots of what is called hard uh, uh, science fiction now he says you know it's a historical literature but only thing is the history is being written of the future and it is an explicit or implicit fictional history and what our history does it the it connects the period that we are talking about to the, our present moment or to some moment in our past so so that the history in the future the history that you are writing is either somehow drawn from our current uh, understandings and current uh, things that we see or it is drawn from something which may have happened in the past and uh, john campbell so one of the biggest names in uh, science fiction he says if you are going to be writing science fiction then your effort should be creating something called a prophetic extrapolation from the known so you look at the known and then extrapolate it in the future now i know there are many definitions on science fiction there are ways and means and sorry there are various ways you could define science fiction 
but i broadly and again as i said i broadly it's, it's the whole whole responsibility is on me i broadly define science fiction writers in two classes the wellsians and the vernians the vernians are on to what is called hard science fiction we uh, get into the nitty gritty of technology look at uh, how how things work look at the mystery of uh, various scientific facts and uh, then there are the wellsians and who are more interested in what's happened to society post a scientific event or uh, post some scientific uh, um, sports or event which has got a scientific basis i consider myself to be an wellsian my my consideration is not the nitty gritty of technology but how technology or certain other things can uh, you know affect society and i always give this example it, you know possibly i have given this in my last uh, talk and i apologize to those who have may have already heard it if you look at uh, ag wells's classic story the time machine and you look at time machine the do the do the story is named time machine it occup the time machine itself occupies a very little space how the time machine works what is the basis of its uh, 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 working what are the technology what are the scientific facts how does it look very little is shared in the story the the story uses a time machine to transport the protagonist to a place in future where he sees how too much of indolence and the necessity of not struggling has made humanity very indolent it has lost all its initiative and not only that uh, you know the too much of differentiation between the haves and the have nots has actually divided humanity into two classes the loy who live a very indolent very pleasure seeking life and the uh, morlocks who live underground who actually provide all the necessities of life and at the and, and as a as a price at the cost they prey on the eloy but if you look at this story this is something that always inspires me because in here uh, the time machine the technology of time machine is very very secondary the primary is the story about the state of society and uh, in in case uh, in this case the time machine serves uh, the purpose of the ship in robinson crusoe's uh, uh, story it just transport the protagonist from one place to another it, it beyond that it has uh, no other purpose it is what normally in greek drama you call the deus ex machina it just is a plot element to just uh, come out of one uh, place it from one place to another uh so let me now uh, come to my upcoming novel uh, the novel is called asi shapta uh, asi the word asi there i you know means sword and shapta is a sanskrit word which means cursed uh, the whole uh, the 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 story is based about sword play and the and, and a person's card the cursed sword so i you know without trying revealing too much because the story is not yet published and we're giving spoilers so let me tell you a brief, brief background of this uh, novel and probably give you an idea of my thought process and how i have tried to uh, reinterpret or redo science fiction when it comes in bengali because i always uh, try to look at things in a new perspective and try and do experiment on new things my first experiment was uh, trying to bring in steampunk into bengali and this is uh, experiment is to bring the japanese jidaigeki style into bengali uh, so the this is just a promotional poster it says asi shapta the, the story meaning the curse of the sword now before i give you the story there is one word that i would like to sort of share with everybody and this is a word called novam the word was coined by uh, the science fiction uh, scholar darko suvin and in he gives a definition of science fiction as a literary device Uh, which uses a dissonance between cognition and estrangement now what is this 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 high you know this complicated sentence dissonance between cognition and estrangement cognition is what we know about this world what we are aware of this world our present our history our culture our civilization our technology and estrangement are things that we do not like it we think that you know there are certain things in society there are certain aspects of technology society uh culture that uh, actually should not be as they are and the author then uses this this sort of uh, dichotomy this this dialectic between what we know and we what we do not dislike to create a new world which darko suvins calls a novum so this novum 
what is the novum this is a absolutely different world it's a radically different world from ours okay what is what we know the real world what in hindi or any other language you call bastav the world that, that the artist is creating is a novum the novum is separate from the bastav or the reality that we experience every day to day and um using this novum then the as a device then the author then tells his or her story so i want to set this and the definition i've taken from uh, dr suparna banerjee's uh, book on indian sanskrit and as i said it's a very very good book a seminal book on indian sir that's what the read so let me now jump on to the basis of the story now why did i read that the story first of all uh, i think uh, i think the previous speaker was telling that we have this uh, notion in most of readers in, in indian science fiction the science fiction is basically for a children's book is a children these are sort of uh, books which are used to make science easy for children sort of introduce them to the uh, the beauty of science uh, and it is um, and it's sort of a educative device educational device to take uh, to introduce people to uh, the world of science to popularize science this i wrote this mainly because i wanted to create something which once for an all can be will and will be i hope leveled as a not for children is very honestly this is not a book written for children this book is written for adults and and the the contents are meant only for adult eyes now this book also i used you know various sources of material my first source was again a book uh, i think in a movie uh, japanese movie uh, by producer kihachi okomoto called the sword of doom it's a very old movie uh, it came out in 1966 now uh, uh, okamoto you know used them took the material of his movie from a serial novel i call it serial because the novel appeared from the pd of almost for 30 years uh, from 1913 to 1943 in various japanese newspaper and magazines and all now some of the english translations only few parts are available in english i could not find uh, more uh, because the story continued even beyond what kihachi uh, okamoto showed in his movie sword of doom the name of this uh, the book the this novel was written by kaija nakajato and the uh, name of the book is the the story was dai bosatsu tage which means the great bodhisattva pass the actual story uh, in the actual story there is a mountain pass called the bodhisattva pass and most of uh, the story the historical story uh, takes around around in around the pass among the protagonists who either live there or are passing through that however when i wrote the first story in the world of ambalika and using uh, rosha using kurusawa's movie i just retold it in a different setting this is not a retelling this goes a step beyond and um, i have rebuilt it i have taken the material as a core as a core of this story uh, and but i have put things that i i have uh, taken from other sources so it's more of a rebuilding rather than a retelling uh um, now apart now do do naka you know the uh, the movie sword of doom and that it's a story on which is best was the main influence there have been other influence uh, the book is had a lot of philosophy on fencing okay and sword sword fighting and i and those the that uh, the philosophy comes from a book called gorin no shop or the book of five rings uh, this was written by a japanese author in 1643 his name was miyamati musashi and he it's if he had a fencing school and he has given a lot of techniques of sword fighting and fencing so some material is sourced from that i have also put some lovecraftian horror in this book and uh, in lovecraft has one of the lovecraftian de uh, deities is a blind god azazoth and who is a sort of epitome of chaos he introduces chaos is a lot of chaos so i have utilized a bit of azazoth uh, sorry have lovecraftian horror from it to introduce a chaos in this story i have also you know sourced uh, my material from number of haikus and death poems uh, from poets such as sengai gibon suse ajiro and those are sort of mixed into the story very difficult to sort of take this out i have read it and interpreted and somebody wants me to point out also where i have used them it is very difficult uh, but one one source and haikus are pretty well known that they are sort of couplets which has got two or three lines 
but one uh, <coughs> type of literature is called in japan is called a death poems actually these are mostly these poems or short couplets were written mostly by the zen monks or samurai warriors when they knew the death was near and they wrote of the ephemeral nature of the world and 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 the journey that which are coming so this also became a sort of inspiration for me to see to look at death in through various to their eyes uh, so these were the, some of the sources that we other also sometimes very difficult to even point them out uh, now what is now let me since you know come to world building and the novum what is my novum what is my world uh, it is a, the no the, the the stage or the novum on which the story is getting executed is a planet called ambalika now man has somehow traveled across the stars to this planet and settled down there and uh, they find that there is the remains of the ruins of an alien race the alien race is no more no more to be seen but their structures the buildings made by them some of the technologies are scattered on the planet and uh, i did not again use the word alien now i have a habit of making up words i do not know it's a good thing or a bad thing but uh, one problem was that i started writing i found that there was not too much of uh, technical words uh, or the words were were not very suitable to literature i mean one word for alien in the uh, uh, translated is bingrahi you know the uh, residence uh, residents of another planet but somehow it sounded a bit or to my ears so i used created a word called bhinnar bhinna you know is different and nara is man so i get bhinnar that's a word that i get now in this society after uh, sorry in this planet after hum, you know the human beings have reached they have regressed they they, they have lost uh, all the knowledge and skills have been lost society has been uh, gone back into semi feudal state uh, politics has gone back uh, people are using old technologies and they are using leftover uh, alien technology by scavenging them now why i created a world like this is uh, as a as a uh, as a sort of portion as i said uh, from darko suvin's example that the novan some comes from uh, cognizance and uh, you know that estrangement the estrangement for my estrangement comes from the fact that society is like a human body that human body uh, if we do not care for our body if we are not taking care of our hygiene if we are not taking care of our health this body will fall apart uh, you know it's uh, the second law of the thermodynamics the world goes from less chaos to more chaos so society is also like that if you just let it be there and do nothing to fix it and then manage it it is it could also uh, fall apart uh, in this world this rule of law is almost vanished it's all people live by the sword it's a uh, might is right um, and in his world uh, rn is not in sufficient quantity found so people have using a kind of uh, glass which have named is path kanch or steel glass which the technology they borrowed from what are the leftover alien remains are there you so people have forgot news of guns uh, warfare has reduced to medieval style sword play and this a world has almost fallen back to medievalism which has regressed you know man who had the uh, man who have travel the galaxy to reach the world now have sort of gone back right so they are instead of progressing they have regressed uh, now if you think this is not possible i would like to draw your attention to the fact that there has been actually many civilizations in 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 history uh, etruscans harappans who after living uh, you know reaching a pinnacle have just vanished and not much is known about them and for society to come back to that level of civilization took even hundreds of years if not thousands and there are many uh so that was my that was my dissonance of the of the world i know there are very strange uh, creatures and uh, that i created for the story uh, the main animal here is uh, uh, the the called the camel ape uh, i which i in I, i did not try here this i i call it utia bandar in hindi it's a camel ape it's a ape like animal which moves around and there's a body of a like ape and the head and neck are like a camel then uh, then i there's a megafauna which looks like a deer which uh, sports a pair of whiskers so the they call it a mahamriga and the word kaisari comes from kaisar which is a is a former emperor of uh, germany who had a thick pair of mustaches 
then a cat which looks a bit of like a kite and there are colored beast uh, which uh, long neck uh, it's used like a like a horse or a mount by the humans named it gribin from the word griva which you know it means a neck and there is a uh, buffalo like animal blue colored uh, which use a beast beast of burden called the nilkantha mahish these these animals appear in the story uh, so what are the main themes but apart from all these uh, uh, things which are nice to know which gets a sense of all wonder which are the main things the main thing theme that i wanted to address uh, is uh, um, here is that the force of chaos can destroy a society from within it just exploits the fault lines and puts pits man against man creates lot of uh, problems again group going between uh, various parts of society and can destroy a society from within and the civilization as is not unidirectional it, it doesn't seem to have civilized technologically progress today doesn't mean we'll keep in going in the same direction there has been in the past and in the future it's possible that civilization can regress we i took the philosophy of uh, fencing from uh, uh, the japanese fencing book i looked at the concept of shunya which is uh, a buddhist concept uh, of non existence i took uh, uh, i it's very briefly i touched upon uh, one of the concepts uh, in the nasadiya sutta rigveda nasadya sinno sadasitta daning nasidrajo na vyomana paravyat which uh, is a beautiful sentence which means in there there was neither existence nor non existence there was no not air not space you know, what was there so that's probably a <coughs> concept of shunya not shunya doesn't mean zero over here uh, so i end by giving a few quotes i translated them in english because it uh, has some philosophy of fencing and some politics um, so one of one of the teachers says do you know what is the similarity between the philosophy of mahakala and the sword both of the purpose is to destroy the sense of i in man so the philosophy as well as the sword will destroy the i in you if you know i you know said in a very satirical way uh, in another character in the same story says in politics ideals are a bad man they pull you back preventing progress politics as a single goal capture power and enjoy this uh, world with this uh, uh, power i mean if i in a uh, if in a in a said in a very joking man, man, manner in a jocular vein we have the sanskrit phrase called veera vagya vasundara i think now it has become politics vagya vasundara so i probably wanted to bring that in uh, here is uh, uh, the cover of the book it's uh, illustrated by a famous illustrator whose uh, name is uh, Omkarnath Bhattacharya. He is kind enough to illustrate my book. Uh, took a lot of trouble in creating something uh, which fits the story. And, uh, and so that is uh, all about from me. Thank you for, again, all, you know, all of you for listening to me patiently. And thank you, uh, Dr. Navale and the, Dr. Srinarahari, Dr. Arun Mishra, members of Tilgari uh, College, IFSS. or along with this platform to talk um, thank, thank you, you thank, thank you sir thank you very much honorable sumit bardhan ji for a very fruitful discussion we are eagerly waiting for honorable dr 